Hi there, so today we're looking at lesson 5.6b, changing the subject of a formula, um, also called rearranging a formula. Our objective today then to be able to rearrange an equation or formula to find any unknown. Our prior knowledge then, to be able to complete this lesson, you need to be able to use the balancing method to solve equations. Uh, if you haven't done that for a while, you might want to go back and have a look at the videos on using the balancing method before you continue. Uh, things you need for this lesson then, so today you just need a maths book or some paper and a pen or a pencil to write with. So, changing the subject then, let's go through the key words first. There are quite a few words in here you might not be familiar with. So we've got a formula, y equals 2x. Now, y is the subject of the formula. The subject uh, is the letter in front of the equals sign. So at the moment, it says if we wanted to substitute a value for x, we could find y. So it's the thing we're trying to find. Um, so we've been given y in terms of x. So when they say in terms of, it means that that letter is in the formula. So y in terms of x, well, we can see we have y, and to get y, we're going to have to substitute in x. So that's why it's called y in terms of x. It's possible for us to rearrange the formula to give x in terms of y. So rearranging means we're going to swap those letters and numbers around, um, and to get x in terms of y means we want it to say x equals, and in the second part, there'll be the letter Y in there. So whenever it says in terms of, it means that that letter is part of your answer. Um, but X in terms of Y means we want to say X equals. And that's what we call changing the subject. So at the moment, the subject is Y, and we want to have a go at changing it so that the subject is X. So instead of saying Y equals something, it will say X equals something. OK, so now we've looked at all the terminology then, let's have a go and see if we can make x the subject. So to make x the subject, essentially we want to get x by itself. So we want to keep x and we need to get rid of this 2 here. Now 2x means 2 multiplied by x. So using our inverse operations to get rid of a times 2, we need to divide both sides by 2. So if I divide this side by 2, we get y divided by 2. If I divide 2x by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, I get 1x, which is just x. And now we have made x the subject, so x is by itself. Now remember we said with formulae that the thing we want always comes first. So once we've got the letter x on its own, our final step is simply to swap both sides. So we just swap them over so that x is the subject, x equals something. Okay, so whenever you find them, if you find the thing you want happens to be on the right hand side at the end, just swap them straight over so that you've got the thing you want on the left, and we read left to right. So x is equal to y divided by 2, and now x is the subject. So the way we look at it then is that we're doing the same process as if we wanted to solve an equation but we're not solving anything. So if we had this equation here, we could solve it to find a value of x, but we don't want to solve, we just want to make x the subject. So we're going to go through the same steps as if we were going to solve it without actually doing any of the calculating. So if I wanted to find x, the first thing I would do is get rid of this plus seven. To get, uh, sorry, this minus seven. To get rid of minus seven, we would need to add seven to both sides. If I add 7 to both sides, 2x minus 7 plus 7, minus 7 and plus 7 are 0, so I'd get 2x. And I'd need to add the 7 on this side. Now, normally at this point in the equation, we would work this out. We would say 13 plus 7 is 20, but we're not trying to solve it. We just want to make x the subject. So I'm going to just leave it there. Again, now we still want to find x, so our next step would normally be to get rid of the times 2, we would divide both sides by 2. 2x divided by 2 will give me x. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so 1x is x. And I need to divide the other side by 2 as well. OK, so we've just decided to divide then this side by 2 and this. But we're not working out, remember, how much this comes to. 
we're just dividing it by 2 and now x is the subject. x is on its own and it is on the left so I don't need to rearrange it. Let's try another one then. So I've got the same thing here. The only thing we've changed, we've changed the 7 into a letter y. So instead of 2x minus 7 equals 13, I've got 2x minus y equals 13. But I still want x to be the subject. So this time to get rid of minus y, we're going to add y to both sides. If I add y to this side, minus y plus y will cancel and I'll get 2x. And this side I get 13 plus the y. To get x on its own, I've got to divide by 2, so divide both sides by 2. That gives me x on this side, and everything I had here already is divided by 2. So we end up with x equals 13 plus y, all divided by 2. And again, x is now the subject. Let's try a third one then. So again, I've made one small change. Uh, so we've got rid of the 13 now, and that's become the letter Z. But we're still following that same idea. So to get rid of minus Y, so remember what X by itself. So to get rid of minus Y, we're going to add Y to both sides. So if I add Y to both sides, minus Y plus Y will cancel. And I get Z plus Y. Again, X on its own, so I've got to divide both sides by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1x, one or just x, and everything that was this side is divided by 2, and now x is the subject. So hopefully you can see we've used the same technique each time, um, and I've just changed one thing a little bit so you can see the progression. So we're still doing the same. So it's the same as if we were solving the equation without actually working out any values. Okay, let's talk through a few more. It's probably a good idea um, to pause at the end of each one and write these down in your book. So we've been asked to make x the subject. So remember, that means I want x by itself. So here's my letter x. So I want to leave that here. I need to get rid of all of these other letters. We get rid of any adding and subtracting first. Okay, so whatever sort of furthest away from this letter. So we want to get rid of plus k. So we subtract k from both sides. Now remember we're subtracting it, so the t was here first, so we have t minus k. I can't put the k in front of the t, we don't q jump, so t minus k. And if I subtract k from this side, plus k minus k, they will cancel out. I'm left on this side with rx. Remember I want x, I need to get rid of the r. To get rid of a times by r, I have to divide both sides by r. So to divide this side by r, we draw a line underneath all of it and divide it by r. And r divided by r would be 1, so 1x, one which is just x. So we've now got x on its own. To make x the subject, it has to start x equals. So we simply flip it round the other way. So as soon as we're down to our single letter, if it happens to be on the right instead of the left, we just switch them over. Make sure you've noted that one down first. Okay, our next example. So we've got one with brackets. Now, usually when we see brackets, it's a good idea to multiply them out. So this time our first step is going to be to multiply out the brackets. So remember when multiplying out brackets, we take the term outside, we multiply it by the first term, and we take the term outside and multiply it by the second term. So 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times minus a is minus 3a. Now we can start to make x the subject. So remember, we want to keep x on its own, so we've got to get rid of all the other things. Now I've got a minus 3a. To get rid of minus 3a, we can add 3a to both sides. So remember, when these are linked together, they can be moved together as well. So we add 3a to both sides. Again, remembering no q jumping, y was here first, so the plus 3a goes afterwards. Minus 3a plus 3a will cancel, leaving us with 9x. I just want the x, so I need to get rid of the 9. To get rid of the times by 9, we divide both sides by 9. So remember, we're dividing everything that was on this side by 9. So our line needs to make sure it goes underneath everything. And dividing this side by 9 will give us 1x, which we write as x. 
Finally, it needs to say x equals, so they're at the minute the wrong way around, so we'll simply swap them over. Make sure you've got a note of that one. Okay, our next one then. Again, we want to make x the subject. Now we've got x divided by 4 plus 2. So we need to get rid of the plus 2 first. To get rid of plus 2, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So again, after the C, because we're not Q jumping, and it will disappear from this side. To get x, this is x divided by 4. To get rid of a divide by 4, we multiply both sides by 4. Now if I want to multiply this side by 4, it means I've got to multiply all of it by 4. So I can't just put the 4 at the beginning and have 4c minus 2. I have to show that I've multiplied everything here by 4. And to do that, it means we need to put in some brackets. So the brackets are showing that I've got 4 times all of the c minus 2, not just one part of it. If I multiply this side by 4, divide by 4 times by 4 will cancel. And I'm left with just x. And again, if the x is on the right instead of the left, we just swap them over at the end so that x is now our subject. Make sure you've made a note of that one. OK, so now it's your turn. So you've got some examples there, um, some questions there, sorry, similar to the examples that we've done. For each one, you need to make x the subject. So pause the video, have a go in your maths books. Use your examples as a guide to help you. OK, let's have a look then at the solutions for these. So the first one then, we should have x equals t over a, t divided by a. For number 2, x equals h plus 7. For 3, x equals r minus y all divided by 5. For 4, x equals 2 divided by a plus b. Um, for 5, we've got x equals 3y minus 2 divided by 8. And for 6, we've got x equals 2 brackets a plus y. Check your answers. Make sure you're happy with those. Um, if there's any there that you're not quite sure of, just have another go and see if you can get to the answer we've given. OK, that's it for that lesson today then. Um, you might need to practice a few more of these or watch the video again. So if you do need a bit more practice, then you can use uh, the Maths Genie site or go on to BBC Bite Size and have a look on there as well.